How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Today we're taking a look at Workhorse because it's moved down a lot throughout the week. We also saw a 7% drop on Friday. So a lot of people were worried because two major things happened during the week. One was that an insider sold and they sold about $1.3 million worth of shares. A lot of people were asking me about that. The other thing is actually a good point, which is something that was passed by the federal government that makes it a lot easier for the federal government to adopt EV into their fleets. So we're going to go through that. Make sure you stay through to the end because there is some important information towards the end too. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, please leave a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me and to the channel. If you haven't hit subscribe, hit subscribe down there. We do daily videos, a lot of videos about Workhorse too. So definitely subscribe to get those. And if you want, Webull is doing a promotion and they're going a little bit longer. So before they only had one free stock, when you signed up and deposited $100, they brought it back for a week and they liked it so much that they're bringing it back for a couple more weeks. So if you've wanted to do that and you haven't already jumped in now, you should definitely use the link down below, deposit $100 and get two free stocks worth up to $1,600 each. So thank you guys so much and let's get into it. So Workhorse was down about 7% between market hours and post-market hours on Friday. This was a pretty massive move down and that was after we had seen a couple moves down earlier in the week and the week before. So definitely keep an eye on it because a lot of people are worried about the stock. Now I'm not personally selling. I am holding on until we get the USPS news and then I will determine what I want to do after that. Now I will say too that it has moved up a lot. So this is a stock that is very volatile. This is an EV stock. A lot of people think there's an EV bubble. I don't necessarily think about that as much, but this is something that is highly speculative. So definitely be cautious of that. If this is something that you're just using as a short-term play, it is very dangerous, right? So we could get a large portion of the contract or a smaller portion, and we could see the stock price go up dramatically or down dramatically. Now, something that a lot of people have been looking at, and I don't think this is necessarily why the stock moved down on Friday. I think that was mostly because the general market moved down, but something that a lot of people were worried about last week is the fact that one of the insiders, actually the director, sold about $1.3 million in stock. So this happened on Monday, and we actually saw a pretty dramatic dip early in the week there. And I don't, again, I don't think this is due to that, but I saw a lot of people commenting about this and asking about it, being worried about the director selling shares. And I understand. Generally, when an insider sells, there is a lot of fear that they don't feel good about the company. They feel like it's overvalued or they just want to deleverage. They want to um, diversify. But with this, if you take a little bit deeper look, and I did, you can see on NASDAQ.com, you can see who the insider was. It was DeMont Harry or Harry DeMont. And you can take a look at the exact form they filled out. So what did he fill out and you know, kind of taking a look, a deeper look into it. So if you click on it, you can actually go into the document and see it's a rule 10 B5 trading plan. So I've covered this in a previous video because people were worried, you know, a couple weeks ago <laughs> that an insider sold and this happens from time to time. This was filed about, you know, 10 days earlier, but this was also a 10 B5 trading plan. So what's this mean? Well, you can Google it yourself or you can take a look here. Under this rule, directors and other insiders can sell at predetermined times. So they schedule these out months or years in advance and try to you know, stop insider trading. That's really the purpose of this. They don't want an insider to be able to sell with news that common shareholders or you know, prospective shareholders don't have. That's the whole point. That's why we don't allow insider trading here. So they schedule these out. Now, this was one of those times where this was scheduled out. So this was scheduled months or years in advance, and I am not worried about it. Whether he was selling at $26 a share or $10 a share, he already made this determination that he was going to have to sell shares for this, that, or the other reason. A lot of the time, these executives are paid mostly in shares of stock as opposed to being compensated millions of dollars in cash. So that kind of gives them a reason to try to do well in the company, right? So to try to push that stock price up. Now... The other thing that happened this week that really there's barely any coverage on, and a lot of people were asking me about this too, is the announcement of a new charge bill. So this is called the Charging Helps Agencies Realize General Efficiencies 
act. So definitely a mouthful there. Definitely something that sounds a lot better when you just use the letters, the charge act. But this is essentially, and you can take a look at it too on your own time, but this is something that generally just makes it a lot easier for government agencies to use EV. So this is on the White House website, but essentially it just allows these federal agencies to pay by charge card for the charging of federal electric motor vehicles. And then at the bottom too, you can see them talking about a uh, USPS location that's going to be designated as the post office for Richard Luger. So that's not really important. I know that that is on the USPS, but I wouldn't read into that too much. But the charge card part is pretty interesting because this just makes it a lot easier for government agencies to use EV. So it is interesting and it's one of those things where it just fits in with all the other puzzle pieces where it by itself doesn't mean anything, but it just makes it so much easier. It's another selling point for EV and government agencies. And, you know, the United States government is pretty huge. They have a massive budget. They buy a lot of vehicles. And if Workhorse can continue to provide final mile delivery vans, if they can continue to provide other vehicles, because they are talking about getting into refrigeration, into drones, who says that they can't use their drones, you know, years down the line to be contracted out to the military? You know, I'm just throwing stuff out there that there's a lot of possibilities with EV. And if Workhorse starts to get some revenue in, they start to be able to scale up, put more money towards R&D. There's a lot of different possibilities here. Now, if you want to see a little bit longer version, there are some other articles on this Charge Act. And you can see here that the Michigan senator who kind of helped co-sponsor this said the bill will help save taxpayer dollars in the long run by ensuring the federal government is ready to adopt more EV into its fleet. So it's definitely something that's worth considering and factoring it into your analysis of workhorse going, you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the line if you're looking long term. Now, if you want to see some of the other bullish points that I have about Workhorse, there is a video that I'll put up on the end screen here in a second that goes over all 18 bullish points, and there's even been more since then. And I think it kind of puts into perspective all the good things about Workhorse, and that video got a lot less views than some of my other videos, but I think it's probably my best video on Workhorse. Now, again, this charge act happens right at the same time that we heard some of the other information about the GSA. So this is that charge act is through the GSA. But just a few days after we covered this, that the GSA has workhorses number. Now, I don't know if I'd look into that too much. There were some older vehicles that the GSA were actually maintaining. They had bought three old workhorse vehicles. But it's interesting how all this is lining up around the same time. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Definitely check out the link to Weeble. Thank you guys for watching and hitting the like button and subscribing. And definitely check out this video here at the end to see all the different bullish points on Workhorse. And I will see you in a minute in this video. Bye.